one of the things he said to me, he said, when a person has been afflicted and gets on these medications, it's pharmakia. That means it's witchcraft. It's manipulation. He said, those drugs prevent people from crossing over to him. Hello? He wants to clean the church up of pharmakia. There's a lot of me people on mental medications, all kinds of crazy stuff. And it does nothing but hinder individuals from crossing over. See, the world promotes pharmakia. Amen? It means black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. It does nothing but manipulate and keep a person in bondage. It does not assist. And they never get revelation of who they are in Christ because they can never cross over to that place. It prevents them. They may have a form of godliness, but they ain't real because they cannot cross over until they are free from that accursed item. Is everybody okay? I'm telling you, I saw the Holy Spirit saying, look it. That was the first thing he said to me. I'm going to come against that spirit of pharmakia. It's hindering my body. People are running to the doctors to get medicated instead of running to the throne and getting healed. They're not willing to wait for him. They get a prescription quicker. We are in perilous times right now. We don't need any more distractions than what we have. There's a lot of granolas in the body also, nutty and fruity. They deal with familiar spirits. They walk in mixed anointing. And God wants to sever all of that also. I'm telling you, there's a cleaning up of the church. There's a lot of religious spirits in the body. They're not willing to release themselves from their old traditional ways. You know why? They're not willing to learn the new way. We are entering a time where more revelation will bring <laughs> revival. God is requiring us to reach a level of continuous denial of self. People still do not have dominion over themselves. He said, if you can't have dominion over yourself, you won't have a dominion over a demon. They'll easily manipulate you and promote yourself. You know, he says he provides what we need. Amen? Remember, talents and abilities can only last you so long. You can only get so far. The anointing and the integrity of righteousness is what carries you all the way through to overcome. And you can only get that from the presence of God Almighty. See, so people can read the Word of God, but never cross over. The more you sow in the Spirit, the more you sing, the more you release the words of God, the more you begin to break off that stuff. One of the things he showed me today, this morning, he says, my people need to start praying more of that disconnect prayer. Hit it seven times in a day. You're struggling, disconnect from the world. Disconnect from that stuff. Disconnect from those doctors. Disconnect from those labels. It's a time of disconnect so we can get reconnect. Amen? Listen, he is raised, and we sing that word, an army of God. An army of God, not wimps of God. Not soulish, fleshly, self-centered, sold out. Sold out. <laughs> Willing to do whatever it takes. You know, there's going to be a, there's, there's going to be a dividing coming. Those who are and those who want to be. 
See, there's a lot of people that want to be, but not willing to do it to become. It takes a fight. It takes denial of self. And it takes putting the truth into practice. It takes repentance. Amen? We need to be washed by the blood. You know, people need to repent for accepting pharmakia, being jabbed. They need to repent for it and break that curse off. That's why it's called pharmakia. <laughs> it's a curse. Can we not trust God? Can't we trust Him to heal us? Can't we trust Him to free us? Hallelujah. You know, He paid the price for everything. He took every stripe for me and you. Again, I'm sharing with you again. These things have prevented individuals from truly crossing over. It doesn't mean that they're bad. Does everybody understand that? It means they're deceived. They're deceived. And that's Satan's greatest weapon is deception. And his power is fear. Fear. Again, we are in a perilous times. In fact, today's title is Perilous Times. Would you turn to the book of Timothy? Let's refresh and redirect. Hallelujah. Glory. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Everybody okay? Praise God. We want the truth, don't we? I mean, who doesn't want to be free? Glory. Perilous. Perilous. You know, you think about perilous. Well, <laughs> those are areas where it means difficult, hazardous, dangerous, dangerous times. We are in dangerous times. The falling away has already been, been going on. It's getting worse. Thank God there's a harvest to replace it. In verse 1, would you read it with me? 2 Timothy chapter 3. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Are we in the last days? If you don't know it, you know it now. Amen? For men will be what? I mean, what do you think lovers of yourself is? It's an inability to deny yourself. You are before God. In fact, when you deny yourself before God, you have a heart of a God. Hello? Does everybody understand that? That's what the Lord called Lucifer. You got a heart of a God, and it ain't a God like him. Because he's been lifted up with pride and arrogance. You believe you, got, you are a God. So if you can't deny yourself, you're saying you're better than God. Oh, hallelujah. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of mud. Money. Boy, does the devil mess with people with money. They'll be bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without control of ourself. Here we go. Brutal, despisers of good. They'll be traitors. They'll be headstrong. They'll be hot, haughty. They'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. But, you know, they will have a form of godliness. They will say the right words. They will worship correctly. But their heart is deceived. It says, and from such people do what? Turn away. For these are the sort who creep into households and make captives of individuals. Load them down with sins and lead them away with various lusts. Always learning. But they are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth or cross over. 
Now as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so these also resist the what? Truth. These are men and women of what? Corrupt. Their minds are contaminated. You think they might be contaminated by medication? You betcha. Lust, pornography, how about music? Even the media and the lies and deception will contaminate someone. They are disapproved concerning the faith because they're not truly walking in faith. That's the disconnect. See, faith is associated with connect. They've been disconnected. So they're really not walking in faith. They're walking in self. Hallelujah. But they will progress no further. In other words, they miss the opportunities of God. They can't grow. For their folly will be manifested to all. As theirs also was. Everybody will finally see it. He said, but you must ha have, but you have carefully followed my what? Doctrine. Words. Manner of life, purpose, faith, and long-suffering. Love and perseverance. And he, his persecutions and afflictions would happen to him in Antioch and Icam and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, he said, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in this time in Christ Jesus will suffer what? Persecuted. You'll be persecuted. But let me tell you, persecution, maybe, oh, I've been persecuted by, well, because you sowed what you, you're reaping what you sowed, that's why. But some people, persecution is a persecution because you are doing the right thing, not the wrong thing. Hello? It says here, verse 13. But evil men and imposters will what? They will grow worse and worse and deceiving, worse and deceiving and being what? Deceived. But you must continue the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So we know that in these perilous times, there's 10 things I just want to men mention out of these perilous times. I can mention a load of them. It causes an individual unable to reach a level of self-denial. This is where we're seeing these perilous times. Individuals cannot reach a level of self-denial. They're unable to discern the unseen influence. Come on, write them down. Glory. First one is what? Unable to what? Reach a level of self-denial. The second one is unable to discern unseen influence. In other words, they don't realize what's messing with their feelings, what's messing with their thoughts. They're willing to accept anything they hear or think or anything they feel. The third thing is they're unable to resist pride. They're unable to what? Resist pride. Now, pride promotes self, doesn't it? Amen? The fourth thing they're unable to do is to serve God on his terms. They can only serve God on their terms. These are people that have been taken captive in these perilous times and don't even know it. They are unable to go the extra mile. Does everybody get it? That's five. Are you willing to go the extra mile in worship? Are you unwilling to go the extra mile when you're asked something to do? Remember, these are perilous times. Spirits are pressing I'm going to talk about a couple spirits. Well, there's a few of them that are really hindering people and don't even know it. And they're, they're grouping together, even principalities that are grouping together now to overcome. They're unable to disconnect from the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life or lust of self.
They're unable to disconnect from the survival mode. They're always in survival. That means they're first. Why? Because they can't disconnect from the survival mode to enter the surrender mode. Because they walk in fear and they can't trust. Unable to disconnect from survival mode to enter surrender mode. They're unable to maintain a level of faith that keeps them connected. Hallelujah. They are unstable and double-minded. Unstable and double-minded. Again, they have a form of godliness, you know. But there's truly no reverence or respect or fear of God. They do whatever they feel like. There's no reverence, respect, or fear of God. They proclaim to know Christ, but really never learned His ways or practice, practice His righteousness. It's not fully a part of their life. There really hasn't been what we call a life exchange. Does everybody get that? There's not a full life exchange. There's a partial. It's not full. Because they're really not sold out. They're partially sold out. They're not fully sold out. In Romans 8, verse 1. All right, let's try it. One is unable to reach level of self-denial. Two is discern, not unable to discern unseen influence. Three is unable to resist pride. Four is unable to serve God on his terms. Five is unable to go the extra mile. Six is unable to disconnect from the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of self or life. Seven is unable to disconnect from survival, from survival mode to surrender mode. Seven is, or eight is uh, unable to maintain a level of faith. Nine is unstable, double-minded. Ten, we get them all. So, if, uh, they have a form of godliness, but they're not able, but they're, uh, they, they do not carry the true reverence, respect, or fear of God. Amen? Again, they proclaim to know Christ, but never learned his true ways. Or, or put, See, when you learn something, you put it into practice, don't you? So they may know it, but they don't put it into practice. Romans 8. Let's go forward. Glory to God. Perilous times. This is where we're seeing people being taken captive. These are the fruits of it. Romans 8. Glory. In verse 1. Let's speak it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, now he's going to explain to you. Who do not walk according to the flesh. Well, all of these individuals that we just talked about, all of these fruits are flesh. So eventually, if you're involved in any one of these, you're under condemnation. Does everybody get it? Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. See, there's two laws within us. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there's a law of life and there's a law of death, isn't there? For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in his flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement, that means there's a requirement, amen, of the law might be fulfilled. What law is that? The law of 
sin and death. Be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, set their what? Their thoughts, their desires, and their heart on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For to be carnally minded is what? death, but to be what? Spiritually minded is life and peace. So let me ask you this. Is fear a part of peace? No. Then what the heck? Their minds are set on something else then, isn't it? It makes it that simple. For to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, self-motivated, self-centered minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's rebellious towards God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Again, there's two laws. There's the law of life and the law of death. You either belong to the law of God or to belong to life, to self, <laughs> or the <to> devil. <laughs> Amen. You either belong to God or yourself and the enemy. Does everybody get it? Go to verse, um, let's continue on. Verse 10. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 9. But you are not in the what? In the flesh or in the carnal, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now listen. Everybody think, oh, well, the spirit of God dwells in me. Dwelling means relationship, fellowship. Amen? Heck, you can be dwelling amongst a bunch of people and still have no communion with them. Amen? You can, you, you can be in a crowd of people. Yeah, let's all get together. Nobody can say nothing to nobody. So in this word, it says the Spirit of God dwells in you means there is communication. There is relationship. There is obedience. Is everybody with me? Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. In other words, if you are not associated and led by the Spirit of Christ, you're not his. Because you're led by yourself. Amen? And if Christ is in you, the body should be dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of what? So if there's not a pro, uh, fruits and promotion of righteousness, that's God's character, then you're not in the right place, man. Your heart ain't right. That's the sure sign of where you are. Remember, the heart is the desire, the core of all desires, isn't it? Where your desires are is where you are. That's, that's going to expose your relationship. What are you constantly desiring? What do you want? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11, but if, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to the physical, fleshly, carnal, sinful nature or the law of the death to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you're going to what? Die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Does everybody get it? See, in other words, it's t the Word talks about the works of the flesh in Galatians. Because the people are doing the works of the flesh doesn't mean they're going to die instantly. Hello? But you're in the process of dying. It's grieving the Spirit of God. You're losing more and more relationship. And let me tell you, the first ones that come to replace the Spirit of God are familiar spirits. You're okay. It's all right. God loves you. Oh, he's going to promote you so much with false comfort and deception. Does everybody get it? And keep you away in the distance of true relationship by the Spirit where there is true dwelling. That's his job. Hello? Oh, praise God. <laughs> Verse 13. 
For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. In other words, you put to death the deeds in the body, the members. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. Hello. Again, to dwell is to communicate in fellowship with the Spirit of life. He's the Holy Spirit. Practicing righteousness, not lawlessness, which is rebellion. We are to serve according to his requests and not be misled by lust, but led by the Spirit and live. Spirit of life. When you are truly led by the Spirit of God, there is no desire to rebel or compromise. Not one. There's not one desire. Those have been replaced by the love of God Almighty. Your desire now is His presence, loving Him. See, you're, you're reaching a full level where you're willing to deny yourself of anything and everything that will cause any separation between you and God. His love, His presence, and His will. Because see, this is what the enemy plays with. He messes with the body of Christ big time. Go to Romans 7, 21. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? I find then a what? A law that is what? Evil. That evil is what? Present with me. The one who wills to do good. In other words, I will to do good, but there's an evil presence with me because there's two laws. People don't realize it really is everybody's dual personality. You got an old personality and a new one. <laughs> verse 22. I f uh, verse 20, you get one again. I find in a law that evil is present with me, one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, which is the new creation. But I see another law in my members, meaning my old man. Warring against the law of my mind or my thoughts. Always trying to take cap me captive. And bringing me into a captivity to the law of sin. Which is in my members. O wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from me? From the body of death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, with the thoughts, I myself serve the law of God. In other words, I am causing my thoughts. Does everybody understand? I'm renewing my thoughts. I'm refreshing my thoughts. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, my thoughts, I myself serve the law of God, which is life. But with the flesh, the law of sin, which is death. That's why you must take dominion over your flesh. But you cannot take dominion over yourself if you cannot deny yourself. It's impossible. Amen? It's just like what the Word says. Submit to God, then you're able to resist the influence of the devil. If you can't submit to the rules, the laws, and the ways of Christ, Christ's character, you cannot resist the influence of the enemy. He will always mislead you. Oh, I'm, I'm stronger than that. Well, you're not. That's prideful. Is everybody okay? See, in this, what, what, he, what he was saying, he's saying, Paul's saying, I am aware, I am awake, I discern these two laws within me. I am aware of them now. I am aware of an old way and a new way. I am aware of it. I'm awake. Yes, I know. And I'm not going to let the old overcome me. I'm going to stay connected and I'm going to dwell and I'm going to fellowship with the spirit of the living God that I may maintain life and overcome death. Amen? Is everybody okay? Romans 6. Romans 6, please. Verse 5. In verse 5, let's speak it. 
For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. I would say that's still a product, part of that process of denying yourself. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man was what? Crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away with. Now, when you see the word might, that means your cooperation. If you're not cooperating, <laughs> your old man is still there. Taking activity. Overtaking. Those old desires, those old will, old ways. Old care, old habits. Me, myself, and I syndrome. That we should no longer be what? Slaves of sin or the presence of evil. For he, all right, here it is. I'm going to make it real simple. For anyone who has died to himself is free from the presence of evil. Does everybody got it? If you ain't dead to yourself yet, if you're not able to reach a level of denial of yourself, then the presence of evil is easily, easily influencing you. Everybody see that? Verse 8. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also what? Live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to who? God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be what? Dead indeed to what? Sin, but are alive in God, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let what? Sin reign. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not in you. The old man is still sin. Amen? But he says, don't let it reign. Don't let it have dominion over you. In your mortal body, that you should obey it in its what? Lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall have no dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under what? Grace. That's the plan, right? So if you're not cooperating with the plan, what are you under? The law of sin. Does everybody get this? So vitally important. For sin shall not have dominion over you, you're not under the law, but under grace. We must be united with the spirit of life by the death and denial of self, of the flesh, and the old man of character. We must be disconnected to die to self. Disconnected from the worldly lust to, be, to die to self. And a fleshly influence. For sin is the presence of evil. It is darkness. It's pride. It's rebellious. And its end is death. You and I are not under the old law of death, but under the new law of life. But without your cooperation, it will not continue. As long as you submit to the law of life and cooperation with his plan, not your plan, you will not fall into the cycle of repeat. Everyone say repeat. To repent, amen, is to turn away. Does everybody get it? I mean, you know, when we were in the world, we might have repented every Sunday. But Monday through Friday, through Saturday, we lived like heathens, drank and partied and did all the other stuff. Sunday you went to church and got convicted. Oh, man, I need to repent. Repent means don't do it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Repent is to turn away from the influence of the presence of evil, which is sin. And not repeat it. That is true repentance. And God is looking for true repentance. Amen? Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 17. Hallelujah. Can we speak it together? This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind or their thoughts, having their understanding what? Dark and being alienated from the life of God. 
because of the what? Ignorance or the deception that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to the work of uncleanness with greediness. But you have not what? Say it again. You've not learned Christ. You've not learned Christ if you're still doing these things. You've not learned Christ yet. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? Put off. Everyone say put off. Concerning your former way of life, your former conduct, those former sins that keep repeating, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows what? Corrupt according to the what? Deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, your thoughts. See, these individuals are not renewing their thoughts. They're not being refreshed. And that you put on the what? The new man, which, is, which was created according to God in what? True righteousness, right? And holiness. Righteousness and holiness will be the fruits of the new man. If those are not manifesting, then it's the old man. Amen? Is everybody okay? Not learn Christ. Lost dwelling relationship of his lead. Falling into the old cycles, habits, desires, selfishness. Unable to produce the fruits of righteousness. <laughs> Only considering self good. Amen? You get a lot of people around, I'm a good person. But are you a righteous person? There's a difference. Amen? This is all about perilous times we're in. We must be careful. Daniel chapter 10. Now Daniel was praying. He was an intercessor. In fact, he was fasting and praying. Is everybody there? In verse 7, it says, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them. In other words, they felt the presence, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore, I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me. And I retain no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not be what? Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you did what? Set your heart to what? Understand. And to what? Humble yourself before your God. Oh, those are two requirements. Your words were what? Heard. So if your heart is not Set before you, God, amen, to understand what he has. Or you're not humble. Your words will not be accepted. And I have come because of your words, he said. Wouldn't everybody here like to have God, the, angel, the Lord, show up and the angels show up because of your words? Amen. But they're really not your words or his words. Verse 13. He said, I've come. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now listen. These are principalities. Does everybody get it? These are principalities. These are fallen angels that run and rule over countries. And then they have foot soldiers of demons and individuals that serve them. They have strong men and so forth. And he says, I've come, but I had to fight against them. 
It took me 21 days. Now I've come to make you understand what, the, what will happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one having likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained what? No strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left of me. Then again, the one having the likeness of man touched me, and he did what? He strengthened me. By the what? Touch. And he said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you, and be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was what? Strengthened. And said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. And he said, Do you... Do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth into the prince of Greece will come. Indeed, the prince of what? Greece will come. Now look, these princes are associated with two major principalities. The first one is Python. The second one is Jezebel. Does everybody understand it? I'm going to talk a little bit about this. But I will tell you what, what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these except Michael, your prince. Now again, these two princes are Python and Jezebel, both life-sucking spirits that drain the anointing by their influence if you let them. They have, at this time, they gather together. Even right now, they are united together. Now, just because it's Jezebel doesn't mean it's all female. Does everybody get it? Jezebel's spirit will use anyone. What is it about? It's about controlling. They have joined together to suffocate and control all things, manipulating the free will of choice and humanity. We are seeing it in a global arena. It's causing division in the body of Christ. And God is going to expose it and remove it. But we must do something. We must pray. Nothing happens without prayer. They are here to <clears throat> restore the veil of deception, which we've seen globally. Amen? And spiritual blindness, exchanging their identity of the new one for the old one. They're not able to get true revelation they are unable to get true revelation to restrain the desires of the flesh when these people, well, all these people are influenced by these spirits, these principalities. They also utilize the spirit of fear. Does everybody understand that they are overseers? And it causes individuals not to get true revelation to restrain the desires of the flesh and a touch from his presence to be strengthened in the inner man. So that pr puts a person in a position that can't cross over, can they? And Matthew 24. These are perilous times. This is what we're in. And people are not discerning. You know, Python chokes. Have you heard of people getting choked? Those are demons. People getting choked in their sleep and so forth. Amen. Man, after I got first, well, I, after I first got saved, uh, I was attacked multiple times. In fact, we had a water bed. When I was attacked while we were sleeping, my bed went down because they were on top of me choking me. My wife woke up and commanded them to leave. And then I had a vision of the Lord. One time I, I was being, I was fighting. And I saw an angel of the Lord next to me. And he was standing with like with a sword. And I'm like, oh, and I'm holding this thing back. It was actually a creature with fangs and everything. I'm holding it back. And I'm waiting for the Lord, the angel of the Lord to strike him. 
And then the further background, there was Jesus watching the whole thing. And finally, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> he was gone. But man, they'll attack you when you're asleep. <laughs> if you're being attacked in your sleep, it's because there's something. Listen, this was all a part of training. This is really, let, me, let me share something very important. You know why you're on this earth and born now? Training. You're being trained. What are you being trained for? Eternity. You either accept the training and learn now, or you'll miss your position in eternity. See, people don't realize that. They're still playing games here on the earth. God is not a game player. Well, his one game he loves is hide and seek. But he don't play with sin. He don't play with lust. He don't play with rebellion. He don't play with disobedience. You either are or you're not. One or the other. You're either willing to do whatever it takes and learn and put it into practice. That's why we're here on the earth. Compared to the time that we are here on this earth, compared to eternity, it's like a blink of an eye. Then it's over with. And you don't have to worry about it. You won't remember this place. It'll be gone. You have everything new. Praise God. Matthew 24, verse 3. <laughs> Now, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that you are not what? Deceived. Deceived. That you're not deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I'm a good Christian. <laughs> I am a Christ. And will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. Is that happening? How about kingdoms against kingdoms? Is that happening? How about, and there will be famines. Is that, how about pestilence? Hello? Plagues? Earthquakes in various places? All of these things are happening. Why? Because it is perilous times. And these are the beginning of sorrows, which we call perilous times. Perilous times before the entry of tribulation. We see the masking. We see veiling. We see pharmacia, black magic, and medications. Our markings of the beast, they spread globally, bringing death, spreading disease to mankind. They're engulfing humanity with the spirits of fear, utilizing the python and Jezebel princes to paralyze to seize control of humanity, causing division and strife, unable to connect with the voice of truth to be rescued from future disaster. We are seeing this in a global aspect. In Proverbs 23, listen, this may sound very strange to you. Are you ready for this? Of course, it wouldn't be the first time, right? Okay. I just heard the Holy Spirit say something to me. He said, I'm not building the future. We're from the future. Does everybody get it? I'm not building the future. I'm not trying to go out and build a future. I'm from the future. So what am I doing? I'm fulfilling the future for me right now. Does everybody get it? It's called destiny, isn't it? Everyone say, I'm not building the future. I'm from the future. If I'm from the future, I'm going to walk in it. Does everybody get that? See, so many people are busy trying to build their future. We're already predestined for a future. If you'll cooperate and submit, you're walking in your destiny. Remember, we have a call, purpose, and destiny. Amen? I'm not building my future. Does everybody get this? You're not building your future. You're from the future. But see, this is where the enemy plays with people. If you don't know who you really are, 
You won't walk in it. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23, verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's grow with it. Verse 1. When you sit down to eat with somebody in authority, consider carefully what is before you. In other words, don't be deceived. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. In other words, you're willing to accept anything that somebody says. The Bible says test it all. Do not desire their delicacies for they are what? Deceptive food. Hmm. Do not overwork to be what? Rich. Because of your own understanding, cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. In other words, that person's preparing for a future, aren't they? Yeah. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. <laughs> Do not eat the bread of a compromiser or a miser. Nor desire his delicacies. For as they think in their hearts, so they will be. Eat and drink, they say to you, but their heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Deceptive food from the prophets of Baal. <laughs> That's what I call it. The prophets of Baal. Where are they at? They're in the media. Bringing fear, lies, and false futures. False hopes. Psalm 36. Glory. Remember, Elijah killed 400 prophets of Baal. Amen. Psalm 36, verse 1. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is what? No fear of God before their eyes. No fear of God. No reverence. No respect. See, what happens in this area to where... The word says something very specifically. Where two or more are gathered together, he's in the midst. In his name. Not just gathered together. So when you and I come and worship the Lord, whether you feel his presence or not, he's there. And he's checking every single one out. He's checking. The, the word says we're to worship him in truth and spirit. Amen. That means breath. He's checking us all out. In a discipleship house, everything. He's checking out. He wants to know who's genuine and faithful. He wants to know those who are truly trying, attempting, doing to be freed up. He loves to free us, but he isn't freeing someone that doesn't really want it. They'll stay bound. Hello? Praise God. Verse 2. For he flatters himself in his own eyes. In other words, he's looking at the mirror. <laughs> when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is what? Not good. He does not abhor evil. He does not abhor evil. The wicked are rebellious, no fear of God before their eyes, and don't abhor evil. Philippians 4. Almost done. Glory. Are we in perilous times? Hallelujah. Philippians 4. In verse 4, what does it say? Rejoice. Don't be miserable. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Let's start. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. No, always. Again, I say rejoice. And let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is what? At hand. Be anxious for everything. 
No, be anxious for nothing. Is fear anxiousness? Yeah. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Why? The power of prayer. And supplications with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Now, does God hear the prayer of a sinner? No. Until that person does what? Repents. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your thoughts through Christ Jesus. Now, that's powerful. So if, you, if you're right with God, you're going to have peace. You won't be anxious. The Word says that those who set their eyes on the Lord have what? Peace. Those who focus towards Him. That's why we have those focus cards. Hallelujah. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Prayer and worship is a weapon. Prayer and worship is a weapon. Amen? <laughs> Ephesians 6. That's why we love to worship. We love God's presence. Some people come and say, man, this worship is just too long. It's because the demons in you can't handle it. I hear that from, people, from believers that I know that have been believers for 30 years. They won't come to service here because they can't handle our worship. Because they got demons and they don't realize it. They think they're just fine and peachy. They have a form of godliness, but no power. Ephesians 6.10. Glory. Let's speak. And finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not your own. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil, the voices that influence. For we do not wrestle against the physical realm of the flesh and blood, but against principalities. Hello, we just mentioned a couple of them. Amen. Against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness where? In heavenly places. That's why you and I must warfare. Heck, we got the penetrating prayer book. God has given us everything. We have no excuse. Amen? I'm going to close at Philippians 3. Philippians 3, 7. Hallelujah. Let's speak it, please. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for what? Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. In other words, to dwell and know him. Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward those things which are ahead. I press what? Forward. In other words, we don't give up. We keep pressing forward. I press forward. Toward, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as, as many as have a mature mind, have this in mind. If in anything you think 
Otherwise, God will reveal this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. Brother, please, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have for us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, <clears throat> whose God is their belly, in other words, their desires, <coughs> And whose glory is their shame. Who set their minds on what? Earthly things. Selfish. For our citizenship is in heaven. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior Lord Jesus Christ. Who will transform our lowly body. That it may be conformed to his glorious body. According to the working by which he is able. Even to subdue all things to himself. Welcome to perilous times. We're there. We're in it. We've been warned. Amen? Now stay connected, but first get disconnected. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you. We are honored and blessed for your word, your presence. Let what's been released to us be a part of our training and learning, and then bring it to remembrance that we will be aware and overcome in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen.